Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have ln x plus 1 equals x minus x squared divided by 2. This is a non-standard equation because we have ln on one side and a polynomial or a parabola on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a method for solving this problem. We're going to look at it from a calculus perspective and I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to use what is called Mac Lorentz series or infinite polynomials. And we're going to be doing some fun stuff with derivatives. So first of all, let's go ahead and write the left hand side as f of x. So f of x equals ln x plus 1. And now here's what I want to do. I want to be able to write this as an infinite polynomial. That's what Mac Lorentz series is. Basically, we're going to be doing this at x equals 0. So you could also call this a Taylor series. But anyways, so I'm going to write it as a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared. Just a, you know, polynomial that doesn't stop. So it's going to be an infinite polynomial. Okay, you can just keep going. And dot, dot, dot. So this is our f of x, and I want to be able to take the derivative successively, first, second, third, and then plug in some numbers, and at the end we're going to be able to write uh, f of x as an infinite polynomial, and now we'll go from there. So the first derivative of ln x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. The ln function is uh, easy to differentiate, you just differentiate it and then divide by the function itself. The derivative of the, the infinite polynomial is uh, a sub 0 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. The derivative of a sub 1x is just going to be a sub 1. And then the derivative of x squared is 2x, but multiply that by a sub 2, you're going to get 2a sub, sub 2 times x, or we could just say a2, I guess. 2a2x plus 3a3x squared plus 4a4x to the third power, and so on and so forth. This is going to go on forever. Let's just keep differentiating this function. Now we're going to take the derivative of this derivative, which is the second derivative, and that is going to be negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. You basically just uh, increase the power at the bottom and then, you know, negate the sign and so on and so forth. Of course, in the next level, we're going to have a 2 in the numerator. The derivative of the constant is always 0, so just totally ignore it. The derivative of 2a2x is just 2a2, and then x squared is 2x, multiply that by 3, so you get 6a3x, and then 12a4x squared, and so on and so forth. And then let's do the derivative one more time. That's going to be the third derivative, f triple prime, and the derivative of this function is just going to be 2 over x plus 1, to the third power. And you can generalize this to the nth derivative by using an n um, factorial in the numerator and the bottom is just going to be n and you know so on and so forth. And of course you have to have a factor like negative 1 to the power n plus 1 so that the signs can alternate. Again the derivative of this constant is 0, the derivative of this is 6a3 and then we get 24a 4x, so on and so forth. And notice that the 6 comes from 3 times 2, the 24 comes from 4 times 3 times 2. So it's kind of like factorials. Make sense? And the 2 is, of course, 2 factorial. Now, we got the function itself and the first, second, and third derivatives. Now, what I'm going to do next is basically replace x with 0. The reason why we go with the ln uh, of x plus 1 is it's good because you can replace x with 0. If you had ln x, you couldn't do that because it's not defined. So let's go ahead and do the following replacements. f of 0, I'm going to do it ln x plus 1. So it's going to be ln 1, which is... Now, how do you find f of 0 here? Everything will be 0 uh, with x, so you're going to end up with a sub 0, which is a 0. So it's going to be 0 because ln 1 is 0. So from here, we get a sub 0 is 0. And if you take the first derivative and replace x with 0, first on the left-hand side, you're going to get 1. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get a sub 1. So 1 equals a sub 1. That gives you a sub 1. And in the second derivative, replace x with 0 on both sides. You're going to get negative 1 from the left-hand side. And here, you're going to get 2a2. 2a2 equals, and you're getting negative 1. So from here a sub 2 is going to be negative 1 half. You'll get a pattern uh, really soon. Let's go ahead and do the third one. 
and then hopefully you'll see you'll get to see the pattern on the third derivative if you replace x with zero you're going to get two on the left hand side and on the right hand side in the infinite polynomial this is going to be the answer because uh, x will be zero everywhere so six a three and from here a sub three is going to be one third so let's go ahead and take a look at these numbers we have zero forget about it that there's no constant uh, a sub 1 is going to be the coefficient of x is 1, and then we have the 1 half, and then we have the 1 third. So it's going to look like this. ln x plus 1, which is also f of x, can be now written as a sub 1 is, a sub 0 is 0, I'm sorry. And then a sub 1, x, remember a sub 1 is 1, so it's just going to be x, and then you're going to get x squared over 2, and then you're going to get x cubed over 3, and then minus x to the 4th over 4, x to the 5th plus plus uh, over 5, so on and so forth. It's just going to go on forever. But guess what? We don't really need that much. This is good enough. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this to solve the problem. Remember, the original equation gave us ln x sub 1. That's What am I talking about? ln x plus 1 equals x minus x squared over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and replace ln x plus 1 with x minus x squared over 2 because that's what's given in the original problem and the right hand side remember is an infinite polynomial right so we have to pretty much write the all, all the terms dot 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 but notice that we have the x minus x squared over 2 that's actually the motivation behind this problem by the way so we're going to go ahead and do the following we're going to simplify this these two cancel out, these two cancel out, leaving us with a zero, a giant zero on the left-hand side, and a giant infinite polynomial on the right-hand side. So, we can write it like this, x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4, plus x to the 5th over 5, minus x to the 6th over 6, so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? Okay, it goes on like this, and but that's equal to zero. So here's what I can do. x cubed is the greatest common factor. So I can take out x cubed, and I'm going to end up with 1 third minus x over 4 plus x squared over 5 minus x to the, not 6. We took x to the third out, so that should be an x to the third, all right, over 6, so on and so forth, right? Notice that when you set it equal to 0, x cubed equals 0 satisfies this equation. Therefore, x equals 0 is a solution. Make sense? Now, here is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and check that in the original problem to make sure it works. And then we'll do a little bit of calculus. And then I'm going to show you the graph at the end. OK? The graph is very interesting, actually. So if you plug in 0, you get ln 1 equals 0, which is true. So x equals 0 is indeed a solution. So let's do a little bit of calculus here. So we have f of x equals ln x plus 1. And suppose g of x is defined as x minus x squared over 2. I'm going to differentiate f just once. And remember, we already know this. It's 1 over x plus 1, right? I don't know why this came up. Oh, okay, disappeared. And I'm going to differentiate g as well. And sorry for my sloppy writing. I guess I'm kind of rushing through this. Okay, take my time. Slow down. Okay, what's the derivative of x minus x squared over 2? It is 1 minus the derivative of x squared is 2x, but if you divide by 2, constant stays the same, you get x. Awesome. What does this mean? This means that if you replace x with 0 in both of these, you get 1 and you get 1, which means they have a common tangent at that point. What is that supposed to mean? It means that there's a tangent that is tangent to both. There's a line, straight line, that is tangent to both of these functions. Does that mean they're tangent? Not necessarily. Let's go ahead and take a look at some graphs, and hopefully it'll clarify some of the issues. So you can see these two graphs here. Notice that the pink one, I believe it's pink, right? I don't know. It looks like pink. Anyways, the pink one uh, crosses the blue one, right? But it's, they're not tangent because the one of the graphs don't stay on the same side of the other graph. That's my understanding. And by the way, this one I didn't activate here because you're going to see it in the next page. Uh, that is when you expand uh, Maclaurin a little bit more, and obviously you can make up more equations like that. And 0, 0, is where they have a common tangent. And you can see that clearly here. These two functions have a common tangent. I just didn't graph it, but you can easily graph it. It's going to be y equals x. And the dotted line shows you if you continue with the Maclaurin series, you're going to get a more accurate picture. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Actually, not tomorrow. Soon, in about 15 minutes, with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.